We begin this morning with a poem. It's there in the front of your bulletin. It's a poem by David White entitled, Loaves and Fishes. <clears throat> this is not the age of information. This is not the age of information. Forget the news. Forget the radio and the blurred screen. This is the time of loaves and fishes. People are hungry. And one good word is bread for a thousand. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now in September, you're going to hear from the adult mission team that went on a mission trip to Chicago. But I want to tell you one story today. We worked with the Knight Ministry, one of those wonderful organizations in Chicago that works to provide medical services and housing and um, and food to people without resources in Chicago. We did two different street feeds with the night ministry. A street feed looks like this. You find out how many people you need to cook for, and you prepare that amount of food, and then you, your group, you haul it to a street corner someplace in Chicago, where suddenly you're met by the night ministry bus, which is a fully functional doctor's office on wheels. The night ministry volunteers and staff people get out a couple of um, six-foot tables for you, and you set up a buffet line, and if you build it, they will come. People start coming because they know that the night ministry bus is going to be there. And then you and your group stand at the buffet line and you serve folks this meal that you've prepared. So on our first day there, we did one street feed. We had a wonderful experience. And we were feeling, well, we were feeling pretty proud of ourselves, weren't we? We were like, this is good, but we can do more. We can make more. Let's not just fix what, what we had planned to fix. Let's fix more. And so we did. It, see, it was, a, it was a smaller number of people. Instead of fixing food for like 150, the second street feed was only 75. <laughs> We can cook food for 75 people. We can do more. And so we did. We had, um, we had baked beans, the kind with the, the bacon and the brown sugar in it. We had, a, um, we had individually wrapped hot dogs. We had slaw. I made a huge container of slaw. Um, we had a dessert. We had snack bags. We had a whole summertime buffet, which we served in a park in Chicago. So we pulled up to the park and we waited to see the bus, the night ministry bus pulls up and we start the whole thing over. They get out the tables, we get out our food, we get our line ready and here they come. Here come all of the people. And so our mission team folks stand on the other side of the table and with smiles on their faces greeted each person and filled their plates full. And within about, I don't know, 35 minutes, we totally ran out of food. And there was still a line. I know we weren't serving more than we had planned to, but there were more people than what the night ministry had anticipated. And suddenly, there were all of these people for whom all we could offer was slaw. My slaw. I made the slaw. I kept saying, did you eat the slaw? I made the slaw. People did not eat the slaw. I'm just telling you. I was a little disappointed. 
so I could see the members of our adult mission team become crestfallen because we had worked so hard on this meal to make it, to make it so nice for people. And then we flat ran out of food. I turned away and walked a little ways down the path to kind of collect my thoughts and figure out how I was going to frame this later for people, help them work out their questions and frustration. You know, what, what happens whenever you can't meet people's needs? What happens whenever you set out with good intentions and then, and then your best laid plans fall apart? And I was trying to figure out how I would frame this for people so it would be a learning experience. And when I turned back around, there was suddenly a big potato bar on the buffet table. It's like, it was like magic. It was like loaves and fishes. I turned around and there were not only baked potatoes, but there was shredded cheese and bacon and chives and sour cream. And suddenly our crestfallen mission team people were all smiles and offering people baked potatoes. Would you like a baked potato? Would you like it with all the fixins? Loaves and fishes. What happened? Now, I would like to tell you that Jesus swooped down from the sky and with magic hands, like suddenly made baked potatoes multiply out of empty hot dog wrappers, but that's not what happened. Now, at the previous stop, they had more than enough. And instead of throwing that food away or taking that food home, they put it in the health bus in case they needed it. And guess what? They needed it. Everybody who came, they were filled. They still didn't eat my slaw, but they totally ate baked potatoes. It was fine. It was absolutely fine. So here's what happens. We participate in the way of Jesus when we figure out that there's a difference between having extra and having enough to share. I'm going to say that again. We participate in the way of Jesus whenever we figure out that there's a difference between simply having extra and having enough to share. Having extra means that you have a surplus that you are willing to part with. Right? Because sometimes we have a surplus that we're not willing to part with. That's not extra. That's just being greedy. Okay? But having enough to share means that whatever you have... No matter the amount, you're not going to keep it to yourself. Scarcity mentality looks like the first one. Abundance mentality looks like the latter. What does this apply to? Well, it certainly applies to food, but it also applies to money. It applies to how we make use of our buildings and of our vehicles. It applies to how we use our stuff. It applies to how we see the organizations in which we participate and to which we belong. It applies to how we see the towns in which we live and their resources. It applies also to our personal store of energy and our willingness to employ our own emotional labor. It applies to everything. So thinking about the story that Laura read for us, well, I don't know the mechanics of this miracle. I don't. I don't know if Jesus used magic hands and made the loaves and fishes multiply. Or if the people who were gathered were simply willing to share whatever they had. I don't know the way it happened. But what I do know is this. 
I know that Jesus always looked at the world with a sense of abundance. He always looked at people, especially the people who had been discounted. Think about that word, discounted. Like the junk stuck on the clearance rack and marked down. Mmm, discounted. He always looked at the people who were discounted and restored them to a fullness of humanity. He always approached the world with a sense of abundance. And that's what the kingdom of God is all about. I know I've reminded you of this often, and I'm going to remind you of it again. That John Dominic Crossan says that the kingdom of God, it's not something that we believe in. It's something we participate in. John, John Dominic Crossan talked about the kingdom of God as a program that Jesus came to implement on earth. We opt into it or not. We participate in it or not. Well, if we want to participate in the kingdom of God, then we, are, then we ought to start approaching the world in the same way that Jesus did, with a sense of abundance. And when we do, then we're willing to share what we have. We're willing to participate in the miracle and make miracles happen. Because sharing by all means scarcity for none. That's just the way the math turns out. We had friends in town this weekend and it's summer, which means there are peaches. And I love fresh peaches. But I also love making um, a peach galette, which is just a fancy French term for like a rustic pie. So I went to the store and I didn't have time to uh, make a pie crust from scratch. So I bought, I bought pie crusts. They come two to a package. And we had a bowl full of peaches because in the summer, it's just what we do. We fill up the bowl with peaches. And I started making a galette for our friends and for us and realized that I still had an extra pie crust in the fridge. And I have to say, if you're going to make one pie, you might as well make two. It's just not that hard, right? It doesn't take that much extra energy. I had energy that I was willing to spend, energy that I was willing to share. I had a pie crust that I was willing to share, and I had peaches that I was willing to share. So I popped two galettes in the oven in cast iron skillets. And when they came out, I set one in a basket and went to the door. And David said, where are you going with our pie? I said, there's one for you in the oven, honey. I promise, where are you going with the pie? Apparently, David wants galette leftovers. David wants to keep all of the galette for himself. And I said, I'm going to take a galette to our neighbor. At which point, our friends from Florida looked up, and my friend Danny said, Ah, the pie of reconciliation. <laughs> yep. So if you don't know the story, back around the time of the election, I noticed that my neighbor had a different politician sign in his yard than I would have in my yard. I don't have politician signs in my yard. I had a Black Lives Matter sign in my yard. And so one day, during the week that I was preparing to preach on love your enemies, I took him a pie and told him, whenever he asked, why? Why are you bringing me a pie? I told him, well, I can't get up in front of my congregation and preach about loving my enemy if I don't actively try to love my neighbor. So I'm a good Southern Indiana girl. I baked you a pie. <laughs> and so yesterday, yesterday I knocked on his door with oven mitts on holding my galette fresh out of the oven. 
He came to the door with a big smile. I said, I baked you a galette. It's fresh out of the oven. He said, I can see that. And then he said, you don't have to do this. And I said, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because if I want to be a follower of Jesus, I have to be willing to implement the kingdom of God in my own neighborhood. I have to be willing to see my enemies and my friends and my neighbors with abundance. I have to be willing to share. It's how miracles happen. Amen.